this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating easy chrome design effects or metallic chrome effects working in Corel Draw. We'll be working entirely in Corel Draw. We won't need to go to Photo Paint or any other application to get these effects. We're working in Corel Draw 2017, and you'll see some techniques throughout this video I'm pretty sure you probably haven't seen before. We're also going to take our chrome effect once we've completed it and use it as a transparency in our text so we can have spot color separation capability along with the ability to change colors of the text if we want to. So to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and I'll delete my logo here. We won't need that anymore. I'll move this shirt over here to the right. And then I'm just going to type in some text. And I'm going to type in M-E-T-A-L. And I'll go with a capital B-E-N-D-E and then a capital R, just to add some interesting to the text with the capital letters. And I'll pull that out until it's about nine inches wide. Come up here to my fonts and I'll select crown title. You can find this online for free, just Google search it and you can get this font. I'm gonna go to my shape tool and I'm just gonna pull this apart to resize it a bit. Now that is about six inches wide. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit wider, up to say about 11 inches. I'm gonna come over here to my interactive tools. I'm gonna to select my envelope tool. I'll zoom in, pushing my mouse wheel forward. I'll left click, hold down, lasso, select both of these nodes in the center of the envelope and delete those. I'll go ahead and left click here and bring this up to an arch. Now I'll do the same thing down here at the bottom. When you see it change to the squiggly S there, you know that you've got a hold of it. Left click, hold down, and go ahead and push that up. Then I'll lasso both of these nodes here. I'm going to hold down Control and pull this down a little bit. And then I'm going to arch this up a little bit more here just for the effect. Now that I've got my text set up, go ahead and right click on that. I'm just going to convert that to curves. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill that with a gray, outline it with a black. I'm going to go back to my interactive tools, and I'm going to go to my contour tool, and I'm going to zoom in here, pushing forward on my mouse wheel. I'm going to left click and hold down. You can see that contour coming out right to about there, making it just a little bit bigger, because when I make the chrome effect, I want it to be bigger than my text, so when I power clip it into my text, it'll be nice and clean on the edge. And here you can see that I have my corners set to rounded corners with the contour. Over here and select my pick tool. I'll rest over the contour, right click, break contour group apart. Pull back on my mouse wheel to zoom out and I'll duplicate this up here. Now it looks like these, I had both of these selected and I don't want that. I want just the contour. There we go. Left click, hold down, right click one time. You can see the plus sign. That'll duplicate that up here above my original text. The next thing I want to do is make a gradient, but I don't want to go with the interactive fill tool to create my gradient because that's just going to give me a straight gradient. And I want a gradient that follows the arch of my text. So to do that, I'm going to create a rectangle. And I'll create that over here. I'll zoom in here. I'm going to go to my interactive fill tool. I'm going to make this straight, holding down control to constrain it and bring that up. Now down here, I'm going to click on this square and I'm going to change this to a lighter color. By clicking on that arrow, I'll come over here and make that a lighter gray. Then I'll come up here on the line, double click and create a new color area in my fountain fill and I'll make this a darker color and then I'll do the same thing here double click again I'm going to make this much lighter as you can see there and then I'm going to come here once again double click come here make this darker and you can see the metallic type fill that I'm getting here when it comes to this white I'll click on that I'm going to change that to a lighter gray something like that there. And then I might come here and make this just a bit darker for that metallic look. And that'll be good to go 
right there. Then I'll go back to my pick tool, go here, right click, and I'm going to get rid of my outline. I'll go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. Don't need a transparent background. I'm going to go at 150 DPI. I'm not going to have anti-aliasing. I'm going to select OK. Now if we zoom in here, we can see the steps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to bitmaps and I'm going to convert this to vector. So I'm going to go to bitmaps and I want to go to outline trace high quality image and let that process. Now I can see I've got 209 curves, nodes, etc. And we can see that this is now going to be a vector gradient. So I'll go ahead and select that. And by vector gradient, I mean it's going to be vector objects. And I'll pull this off to one side. Here's the bitmap in the background. I'll go ahead and delete that. I won't need that anymore. These, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup all. I'm going to come in here to the top. I'm going to select the top vector object and just pull that down like that. What I'm doing here is I'm going to cause these to overlap just a little bit as opposed to being right next to each other. And I'll move that bottom one up. Now I'll just go ahead and lasso all of these. I'll go to Align and Distribute. I'll come up here to Distribute Space Vertically and apply that. Then I'll come over here and group all of those vector objects together. I have 209 objects there. I'll go ahead and get rid of my original bitmap. Now I won't need that anymore. I'll bring this gradient, which is set up with vector objects over here next to my metal text. And I'm just going to left click and pull this over to the side here. Now that looks transparent, but really it's not. It's just the way it's rendering in Corel. I come over here again to my envelope tool. Lasso both of these nodes holding down my left mouse button and delete those. I'm going to arch this up. Actually, what I think I want to do is bring this in a little bit closer to the edge of my text and do the same thing here, just lassoing these nodes, holding down control and moving that over. And then I'll come here, click off, come here and left click, hold down, bring that up to there. Do the same thing down here at the bottom. Pull that up into there. And there's my gradient. Now I can bring this down a little bit over here, holding down control to make sure I stay straight. Do the same thing here. Just tighten that up so I get as much of that gradient as possible in my actual vector text. Go ahead and pull this off to one side. Got our contour here. Go ahead, right click, pull this over that, release and select power clip inside. Then come down here to the power clip and center contents. You can see that set up. Now I'm going to click off, click back on, and then I'm going to right click to get rid of the black outline on that contour. Now I'll zoom in, pushing forward on my mouse wheel. I'll take this, select it, and I'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. I don't want aliasing turned on. Here's why. Go ahead and select that, select OK, and you can see that doesn't really give you a very good result. So I'll hit Control Z. The anti-aliasing doesn't really work very well there. I'm going to hit Control Z and go back there. Now with that selected, once again I'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. I'm going to have anti-aliasing off. I'm going to have transparent background, and I'm going to change this to 300 DPI. I'm going with RGB and select OK. And now you can see that my gradient looks great, and it's also following the shape of my text, which was the result that I wanted. I'm going to go to bitmaps. I'm going to go to blur. Gaussian Blur. I'm just going to do one pixel that I'll be like doing my anti-aliasing and select OK. I'm going to go to Bitmaps, come down to Texture. I'm going to click on Plastic. And we can see that effect taking shape. I'm going to take my depth here, bring that up. My highlight, you can see I can adjust that. And that'll make some adjustments. You can see the color get lighter, etc. I'm going to smooth this out quite a bit here to right about there, and then I'm going to select OK. So the next step is, is that I'll go ahead and lasso this so we can see what's going on 
while we're working on it. I'm going to go to Effects, Adjust, and Tone Curve. Now this is set to straight. I'm going to collapse this preview. I'm going to change this to Curve. I'm going to start creating a squiggly line throughout my Tone Curve here, going in different directions and different heights, creating the chrome effect. And you can see that effect starting to take shape. And I'll come drag something down here like this, say, right there, and then we'll do the same here. And we'll do some more here. I'll bring this over this way just a little bit. Pull this down. Make sure I got that. Pull that down a little bit there. And you can see that chrome effect starting to take shape. And I'll pull some of this over this way. And there you can see all of that metallic chrome look starting to come together using this squiggly line that we're setting up with our tone curve. I'll bring some of this over this way. I can really dial this in, tweak this in, etc. As you can see here, maybe bring this up here a little bit. See how that works for the effect. And some of the black, I might want to come down here and bring some of that up that way. But you can really see that chrome or metallic effect being built into that. And at this point in the tutorial, I'll be happy with that. That's a really nice looking metallic or chrome effect. And I'll select OK. Now that I'm happy with my chrome effect, I'll go ahead and export this. So I'll hit Control e to export. And I'll just leave this as Chrome Tutorial. That'll be fine. I'll go ahead and export that. And we're going at 300 DPI. That'll be fine. Select OK. Then I'm going to come back down here to my original text. I'll pull that down. Delete what was my contour. And here I'm going to change this to a black. And then I'm going to go to the Transparency tool. I'm going to select a bitmap. And here I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to Browse. Now here I'll have to change it from a Corel Draw fill to a PNG file to recognize the file that I exported. And that would be right there. And I'll select that and select Open. And that'll fill that right in. Now that is a transparency set up with that object. So I can change the fill color of it. You can see if I left click, I can change that to a blue or like a cyan color or a real cyan up here, but I'll go with the black for now. And I can also give this now an outline. So I can go to my object properties, go to outline here. I'll change this to, let's say, three points. I'll change this to rounded corners, rounded here, and we'll go to the outside. And we'll right click and make sure that's a black. Is three points big enough? Let me zoom in here doesn't look like it is. I want to make that bigger, but actually my issue is now here is on transparency. I've got the transparency applied and everything, so I need to come over here to fill only, and then you'll see that line appear. Also, what you'll want to do is you want to go to your edit transparency and select transform with object. Let me hit cancel here and I'll show you why. If I resize this, you'll see that the transparency did not resize with the object. I'll hit Control Z, we'll go back there, and we'll click on Transform with Object, select OK. Now there's a little bug here that got rid of my outline, so I'll have to go back and put that back. But now when I transform the object, you can see that my transparency will size and shape with my object. Go back to the outline here, and we'll go ahead and set this at, let's say, four points. And I think what that did is that actually reset that in my transparency. And there it is back there again. So you've got to watch that when you do that. Edit transparency, it'll change your transparency settings and you'll lose your outline. So you want to make sure you go back and set that back to fill only so you still have your outline. I'm going to go to my outline. I'll come here and I'm going to change this to scale with object just so it stays the same size. And I might want to change that to, let's say, 8 points, see how it looks a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll go with 6. I'll enter that and hit Enter. And there we have a 6-point outline ready to go. 
Now I can bring my t-shirt comp over here. I'll just left click and make that a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and select this and I'll just duplicate this. So I'll left click, right click, hold down and duplicate that on top of the t-shirt. Now you can see what's going on here, but I'll fix this in just a minute. First, I want to resize this. We don't have anything behind our transparency. It still makes a cool effect though. Go ahead and copy that paste that back in again, go to the transparency, no transparency, fill that with white, left click, no outline, go to my pick tool, right click on that, order and select in front of, which you can't see but it's right down here, and then I'll click on the t-shirt comp, and there you can see the metallic or chrome effect. And then all I need to do is go ahead and set up the other text for my design, which I'll go ahead and grab that over here. And I'll just left click, right click one time, duplicate that here. And I just arch that custom choppers up underneath my arch there. Go ahead and resize here and center this up. Go ahead and lasso everything and hit the C key to center. And I have my design set up with a really cool metallic effect working directly in Corel Draw very easily and very quickly and getting a really nice metallic effect. So that's how we can do easy metallic or chrome design effects working directly in Corel Draw. Go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next tutorial.